Coffee grounds have cockroach in them. You're not vegan. Challenge accepted. Google cockroaches in coffee and you will see a number of websites saying, yes, there are cockroaches in coffee. Don't worry, there are acceptable levels of ground up cockroaches in coffee tins. Acceptable levels meaning 10%. Coffee companies are allowed to have 10% of their ground coffee be ground up cockroaches. So there are essentially two claims here. One, there are cockroaches in coffee and two, 10% or up to 10% of coffee can be cockroaches. Unsurprisingly, there is some truth to this, but a lot of misunderstanding and exaggeration stemming from one, something someone said in an interview over a decade ago, and two, can't read good. <laughs> Back in 2009, Fresh Air's Terry Gross interviewed evolutionary biologist Douglas Imlin, who is apparently an expert on the evolution and development of bizarre or extreme shapes in insects. That's a thing you can be an expert in. The focus of the interview is dung beetles, specifically their armor and their horns. It's actually really interesting. He talks about just how big these horns are relative to their body weight, about one fifth of their weight is in these horns. And the bigger the horns, the smaller other things have to be. There's not enough resources left in a sense. And so in some of these beetles, if they have really big horns, they have really small eyes. We found that in beetles that have horns on the back of their head, their eyes were 30% smaller as a result of having allocated everything to the weapons. And in other species, they actually trade off with the testes or with the wings. So, so there are costs associated with producing these big bulky things. At the end of the interview, Imlin starts talking about cockroaches and how even a lot of entomologists don't like them because so many people are allergic to them. And then he shares this little anecdote about an advisor he had when he was an undergraduate back in the 80s. And he was fiercely addicted to caffeine, to coffee. And we'd have to drive way off the interstate to go find good coffee in that day. I mean, we'd go 45 minutes off our route to go find a place that had whole bean, fresh ground coffee. And I remember giving him a really hard time because we were wasting a lot of travel time trying to feed his addiction because he needed coffee every couple hours. And he finally explained to me he had to drink only sort of whole bean, fresh ground coffee. And it was because of cockroaches. This advisor had worked with cockroaches so much as part of his job that he actually developed a severe allergy to them. He couldn't touch them without reacting. And it turned out when he looked into it that pre-ground, you know, your big bulk coffee that you buy in a tin is all processed from these huge stockpiles of coffee, these piles of coffee that get infested with cockroaches. And there's really nothing they can do to filter that out. So it all gets ground up in the oh. coffee. <laughs> And he was actually allergic to pre-ground coffee because of that sort of spinoff from having handled him teaching entomology for all those years. I love Terry Gross's response. Oh, so. I, I don't know what to say. Thank you for that marvelous insight. <laughs> you may not uh, want to put that on the air, <laughs> but for better or worse. Oh, that's really upsetting. <laughs> so that's where the cockroaches in coffee thing comes from. Somebody telling a story about someone else, basically, right? This entomologist telling a story about his advisor. I have a lot of questions, mainly where did this advisor find out about these cockroaches in coffee? And also, did he test this out, right? Did he come to this conclusion because he drank some coffee and had a reaction and then looked into it and went, oh, cockroaches, okay, I can't drink the, you know, bulk buy tin ground stuff anymore. Or did he learn about this knowing he had an allergy and then say, oh, I can't have the ground stuff because I'm allergic to cockroaches. Do you know what I mean? Like, did he actually have an allergic reaction? Snopes did ask Emlyn for more info, and he basically provided none. He just said this is true to the best of his knowledge. That was it. Well, according to the FDA, his knowledge, or really his advisor's knowledge information, is mistaken. While they do say coffee can be contaminated by insects, these insects are not cockroaches. They're the coffee berry borer beetle, unsurprising there given the name, and the coffee bean weevil. Again, pretty expected. The FDA makes no mention of cockroaches. In fact, a spokesperson even said for the FDA to Snopes, cockroaches are not allowed in coffee. So the majority, if not all, of the insects or insect parts in coffee do not originate with cockroaches. So that's good, I guess. 
So that's the first claim. What about the second one, the 10% claim? According to Snopes, this also originates with the Imlin interview, but I could not find that anywhere in the transcript. What Imlin says is that there's only a trace amount and 10% is definitely not a trace amount. Other sources say it comes directly from the FDA's website. If you follow this link, you'll find this table of commodities and defect action levels, basically the maximum you can have before regulatory action is taken or is supposed to be taken. Go down to coffee beans green, go over to defect, insects, and insect filth. Is that not the worst thing you've ever heard? Insect filth, no. <laughs> then go over to the action level, Average 10% or more by count are insect infested or insect damaged. So it's true, I guess, right? At least in the US, 9.999999% of coffee can be insects or insect filth. But is that really what this says? No, of course. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if 10% of a thing of Folgers that you buy was bugs? or bug filth? How could that even be? Look at these little guys. How many of these would you even need to get that much? Even 1%, 1% of it being bug. That's just clearly insane. I don't think coffee producers are that bad at their job, and I don't think the FDA would let them be that bad at their job. So if we read it again, average 10% or more by count are insect infested or insect damaged. So if you have 100 coffee beans, 10% would be 10 coffee beans. This isn't saying those 10 coffee beans, that 10% is actually insects. No, it's saying those 10 coffee beans either have insects in them or have insect damage, right? Holes or whatever from the borer beetles. That's a lot of beetle juice. No, it's not. Imlin was absolutely right. This is a trace amount. And remember, 10 beans is not even the cutoff. That's where regulatory action is supposed to be taken. You want less than 10. And those 10 or 9 beans might not have any insects in them. They might just be damaged from insects. So no, 10% of ground coffee is not cockroaches or any other insect. Now I realize all of this might not change the point of this video, which is veganism. Is coffee vegan? If coffee necessitates the death of animals, cockroaches or otherwise, it shouldn't matter if it's 10% or 0.0001%, right? I think it does matter. More animal deaths is definitely worse than less. 10% is a whole heck of a lot worse than 0.001% or whatever the actual number is. I definitely believe we should focus on the food and products that cause the most harm. And coffee containing a trace amount of insects is a whole lot different than a tin of coffee being one-tenth insects. And let's not forget, this is not unique to coffee. No foods are clean. If we go back to that FDA table, ground allspice can have up to 30 insect fragments per 10 grams. Apple butter can have up to five insects per 100 grams. Canned apricots can have up to 2% by count infected by insects. Canned or frozen asparagus up to 10% by count infested with up to six asparagus beetle eggs and or sacs. Oh boy. And that's that's just the A's. Bay leaves, insect infested, frozen berries, insect infested, cinnamon, cocoa, ginger, oregano, peanut butter. And that's just in the finished product. This does not include all of the insects and other animals who are injured and killed during the planting and harvesting of all of these plant foods. So coffee has to be vegan, right? I mean, if it's not, then a lot of other plant foods aren't vegan either. Maybe, I mean, if we go to the definition, as far as is possible and practicable, is it possible to avoid peanut butter and ginger and fruits and vegetables and grains and beans? No, at some point your diet just goes down to nothing. I mean, what food would actually be okay? Is it possible to avoid coffee? Yeah, pretty, pretty easily. <laughs> pretty easy to avoid coffee. It's not even a food, right? It's a beverage. It's a drug. It has stimulating benefits. It might have other benefits as well, but it doesn't have any nutritional value. So coffee isn't vegan? I... To me, this is where veganism gets kind of subjective. Every person's as far as is possible and practicable is a bit different to a degree, right? Someone's saying it's not possible to give up beef, so they're actually a vegan. 
no, come on. But small potatoes like coffee and chocolate, things with minimal impact and little to no nutritional value, I think it's up to each individual person. I have a cup of coffee in the morning, sometimes in the afternoon as well. I have no problem calling myself vegan, but someone else might. At the end of the day, I don't think it really matters if coffee is technically vegan or not, because again, the impact is so small. Veganism is a good heuristic. It's right 99% of the time, but there are areas where it's just not that important, where acting on it doesn't really make sense unless it's easy to do so. Like someone who hates coffee, right? Someone who hates coffee, not drinking coffee, makes sense. And just to be clear, my point with these videos is not to make veganism harder or to make anyone feel bad for drinking coffee, to make myself feel bad <laughs> for drinking coffee. It's really just for learning purposes and really for fun. I have a lot of fun researching this and learning for myself because a lot of these topics like truffles and even clean meat to an extent and now coffee I'm unfamiliar with or I haven't really looked deeply into. So it's fun to decide for myself whether it's vegan or not. As always, focus on the big stuff, right? The beef, the pork, the chicken, the eggs, the milk, the cheese, not the chocolate or the coffee or the cookies with conventional sugar instead of organic sugar. If you want to focus on that stuff, cool. But again, that's kind of a personal preference thing. We have to be careful that we don't put so much focus into things that don't have much of an impact because we're all limited, right? We can't change every single thing. And I should also say that clearly I'm biased. I do drink, I mean, this is empty, but I do drink coffee. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts about coffee down below and subscribe and support the channel if you want. Patreon.com slash unnatural vegan. I do still have sale on stuff like this on my spring page teespring it's not teespring anymore it's just spring so check that out if you're interested and yeah thanks again new video maybe probably soon i'll probably have one more and then i'm gonna take a little break so yeah a lot of sources also say choose whole beans instead of ground or like freshly ground i'm not really i guess i kind of know why but just to be clear the fda is not talking about ground coffee they're talking about whole beans so yeah i mean i guess the point is you can look at the beans and see if they have holes in them or whatever <laughs> i don't know whatever oh and in my research i found this tiktok from an md apparently claiming the cockroaches come from falling in while they're being processed of course she's not just a doctor she's also a wellness guru who sells candles? Can you imagine if you went on TikTok and saw her and was like, oh, that's that's my primary care physician. Okay. <laughs> oh, I don't wanna go, I don't care. It's fine. <laughs> and they're so much smaller than they were just a few months ago too. That's, ugh.